it's your boy Scott from King Queen Cichlids bringing you yet another new video. Now before we get started, please hit that subscription button, hit that notification bell, and hit the thumbs up if you like what you see today, or hit the thumbs down if you didn't like what you see today, but at least leave me a comment so I know what I can do to improve your experience at King Queen Cichlids. Now with that said, today's video, the forgotten cichlid, the true parrot cichlid. Let's talk about it. Got one in the fish room. Let's go! Alright guys, it's Scott and we are back in my office. Today we're going to talk about, as I said, the true parrot cichlid, the Psittacus cichlid. Now, this is not going to be a hybrid bashing video or anything like that. I know when people see hybrid talk, uh, that can get some... Uh, some feisty discussion going on. I am not a hybrid basher. If you like hybrids, great to each their own. If that's what got you into the hobby, fantastic. Hopefully over time you will think about keeping some true species out there because we need each and every experienced hobbyist to help make sure that these fish are kept and don't die out. Uh, I've done a video about the CARES experience and fish that are endangered. So hopefully you guys that are keeping hybrids out there, thumbs up, but consider keeping a true species from time to time as well. We need each and every one of you experienced hobbyists. Now, with that said, uh, I am a little frustrated when it comes to the fact that if I get on Google and I type in parrot cichlid, I would assume to see the true species. What I get when I Google it, and Google is like the largest search engine out there, is the blood parrot cichlid. You guys try it at home or you watch it here. Dial in pirate, uh, parrot cichlid and you're going get to get the blood parrot cichlid. So for me who likes to keep true species that's a little frustrating. For me who likes to make sure that people are educated about true species and what's available to keep and the diversity of the cichlids that we have out there uh, that's a little troubling to me, and I'm going to figure out what I can do to get more information about the Sitica cichlid out there so more people know about it. I've called stores before and asked for the parrot cichlid, and always when I get there I find out they thought I was talking about the blood parrot cichlid. So there's a lack of knowledge and understanding about what the true parrot cichlid is. So we're going to go in my fish room. I actually bought a Parrot, true parrot cichlid for Liz about two years ago. I got it from my buddy Mark De Niro at Natural Pets Plus. I'll leave a link up above with their address in case you want to check them out. Mark always has some fantastic fish uh, that you're going to really enjoy at great prices. They're always healthy, so definitely check Mark out. Let him know that I sent you at Natural Pets Plus. It used to be called uh, Captain Nemo's. Definitely check it out. No bashing of hybrids. I'm not trying to do that. If that's what got you in a hobby, great. But I do want to make sure that, as I said in the video, this is not a forgotten cichlid. That we don't forget how amazing and magnificent this cichlid truly is. Because it is a great fish to have in your fish room. And as I said, not enough people are keeping them. Beautiful fish. Alright, let's go check it out and then we'll talk about it a little more. Guys, we are back in my fish room. This is the back end of my fish room. Sometimes you guys don't always get to see this portion, but I have two 40 gallon breeder tanks set up. The bottom tank is uh, my Parachromas Frederick's Eye now because it's not a Lazelle Eye anymore. And the top tank is the Sitticus True Parrot Cichlid, as you can see here. But it's from South America, hardy fish. Uh, gets to probably anywhere from 12 to 14 inches long. I got this guy about, as I said, two years ago. He was about four inches. And right about now, maybe eight inches. I think they're kind of slow growers. I think they're slow growers, but keep in mind that I keep like peacock bass and jaguar cichlids and dovi, which grow fast. So in retrospect, I think the parrot cichlid grows slower than most. Uh, just a hardy fish, beautiful full of color, full of attitude. I mean, this guy is fantastic. And um, I think you guys would really, really enjoy them. Come on a little closer, guys, and check out the Psittacus Cichlid.
All right, guys, as you're watching this footage of the True Parrot Cichlid, I do want to give you some information. These cichlids are metallic green species that is native to flooded forest regions of black water habitats of South America. So they come from the kind of black water regions, and that's something cool that you can do in your tanks if you ever want to do tannins and really give it a nice natural look. Now, I know that mine was in a breeder, 40 gallon breeder, which is more than enough room for him at his current size, but they will get up to 15 to 16 inches long, and so I would suggest long term, you need to put them in a minimum of a 75 gallon tank. Uh, some of the things that I would have in there would be sand or some sort of like smooth gravel substrate, driftwood, rocks. Uh, I wouldn't put any live plants in because they, I, in my experience they destroy them much like most of the cichlids that I keep in my fish room. Uh, but I think they really enjoy a natural looking habitat and if that's something you can recreate with your fish tank I think they're going to be even happier and you're going to see even more of the true colors and their true behavior if you can re recreate their own natural habitat. Alright guys, we are back in the office. Hope you liked that footage I gave you of my parrot cichlid, the Sitica cichlid. It's a freaking amazing, amazing cichlid. Now, the last thing we really didn't talk about is food. What do I feed my cichlid? What do I feed my parrot cichlid? Uh, and again, like I do most of my cichlids, it's just a wide variety of pellets, flakes, frozen. Uh, you know, I just like to give them a wide variety of diets. Uh, in the nature, they are carnivores, so they eat insects, smaller fish, crustaceans, stuff like that. I will tell you that I've had trouble with snails before overtaking my tanks. I've been able to take the Sitica cichlid, put it in my tank, and he will just devour every snail in there and get all that snails under control where I don't even have them anymore. It's quite amazing. You put them in for a day or two, and say you have two or three hundred snails in your tank, like in a 150, he'll clear that out in just a couple of days so and he'll be happy about the whole thing so give him a wide variety of diets I don't feed live foods I've told you guys that a million times but frozen foods flake foods pellets uh, anything to give him a nice balanced diet of nutrition will be great for these guys uh, again great cichlid so disappointed that they are not talked about more my friend uh, Jim Cummings has a great channel uh, and I'm going to put a link up here so you can see even more footage of these guys as well as other South American cichlids and Madagascar cichlids. Now Jim is a great, great uh, teacher and uh, a well advanced hobbyist. He does talks around the globe about cichlids from South America and Madagascar. He actually keeps the South American and Madagascar uh, cichlids together because basically the water parameters are very similar and he's got some fantastic video coverage in his fish room of the Madagascar and South American cichlids living together, breeding, etc. So I'm going to leave the link up here again. Definitely check out Jim Cumming Cichlids. Let him know I sent you because the man is phenomenal. I didn't want to just leave us without not talking about the blood parrot. Now I don't have blood parrots. I'll be honest with you, very early in my career, I did keep a blood parrot for probably four years, uh, and his name was Tangerine, and uh, I didn't really know much better at the time that I had them, but once I found out they were not natural, they're not a true species, I'd soon pass them on to someone else and began keeping other cichlids. That doesn't mean that's what you have to do, but I am saying that I have had experience of keeping blood parrot cichlids are they have a deformed mouth that they can't close uh, and if you're keeping them and that's fine if you're keeping them keep in mind that you're going to need foods that float so they can kind of swim into the food uh, since they can't like go down and close their mouth and pick it up stuff like that you also want to make sure that you're keeping your blood parrots with fish that are not as aggressive so you know they're not fighting other fish and not getting food uh, you don't want to have a lot of fish in there they're going to be able to eat up all the food before the blood parrots get to it the blood parrots have a funny body shape and they, they don't swim very fast and 
again they're not able to close their mouth so they do have some problems eating I think they're susceptible to certain diseases because of the hybridization that goes on with them uh, but that's just again my personal opinion now I actually did go to Walmart and Petco to do some coverage of blood parrot cichlids uh, not to my surprise when I got to Walmart uh, they had blood parrots for $7.99 and just about every one of them was infected with ick. I actually almost thought about buying all of them so I could take them home uh, and try to cure them because I know they're going to die soon. I mean, that ick is, is not going to be fixed. Uh, I tried to find someone working there and they kept passing me around and I never got to anyone that was going to go over there and actually do something about the ick or, or give them some sort of treatment. So. Back to my point, I do think they're susceptible to diseases easier than other true species and that's just because of the breakdown of the genes and the DNA when it comes to hybridizing these fish. Um, beautiful fish, uh, don't get me wrong, and they always, because of that deformed mouth, they always have the smile on their face, which I think people like. They also, I think they're, if I had to guess, no one really knows. These fish came out from Taiwan in about the late 1980s. If I had to guess, I think it's a mix between a Midas and a Convict uh, to get that, that hump, the nuchal hump, and the shape and, and the look. Uh, no one truly knows. If someone knows, let me know in the comments below what you think it's mixed with. But again, just not my cup of tea. And I hope people that pick them up and keep them are happy with them, but I hope they will also I hope they will also consider getting some true species out there. Alright guys, that's my time for the day. Hopefully you enjoyed the information I gave you and this video as well. Now, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, certainly consider subscribing, hitting that subscription button, hit that notification bell so that you know every time Liz and I get on live streams or upload a new video. Give me that thumbs up if you like this information today, or give me the thumbs down if you didn't, but at least leave me a comment so I know what I can do to improve your experience on King Queen Cichlids. Hope you liked the video, guys. Don't forget to check us out this Sunday at 7 o'clock, not 8 o'clock. It's Easter Sunday, so we're coming on at 7 o'clock. Uh, we hope to have a lot of fun. I hope to have a lot of you guys there. So get your snacks and your beverages ready. We're going to be on live. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.